Hello, this is Steve with Our Sustainable Journey. Welcome back. Um, first and foremost, I want to say thank you. We are up just around 500 subscribers. I think that's pretty awesome. I think what happens is YouTube comes out and hand shakes my hand. Um, no, I have no idea. I don't think anything happens. I just think it's neat. Um, so thanks for sharing the videos, liking the videos, subscribing to the channel. Um, we'd love to have you stick around and see some more cool stuff. Um, today we're going to do kind of a review of everything that's happened. It's been a busy week. Everything that's happened in the last week, uh, we'll just kind of do a quick summary video of um, the chickens. They're doing some cool stuff now. We got some more barn cats, um, some fun deliveries here on the farm, and we'll check in on the worms, see how they're doing as well. So stay tuned, it'll be fun. Uh, if you like the video, click the thumbs up button. If you want to stick around, see more stuff of life here on the farm and, and the animals that we have, and the worms and the food scraps and all the other recycling and fun little projects we've got going on, um, click the subscribe button, hit the bell so that you get a notification every time a new video comes out. Um, I, I do one at least once a week. Um, sometimes more if I have time, it just takes a while to upload them. So we'd love to have you stick around um, and uh, watch the videos. So it's also a cleaning week, um, and we got the cleaning buckets. So this is 160, I think, that we got around to cleaning. So that's probably four weeks worth of buckets um, that I finally got around to cleaning. Um, so we'll be able to keep up with cleaning them now. Um, it's tough when you get behind the pile just grows and grows and grows and grows and grows. So we got them all done. They're out here in the barn drying. Um, Cause what we do is we rinse them with, or we clean them. We, I guess we rinse them after they've been emptied and fed to the worms. Then we um, clean them with like a Dawn soap. And then we soak them in a tub of bleach to disinfect them because they're going out to other people's. They're going to be in people's houses and we rinse them and then we dry them. And so they are finally on to the drying phase of this whole thing. And so we, we leave them in here to dry. Same thing with the lids. So we'll flip the lids so that they can drain a little bit. Um, and that'll get any of the water that's left inside of them out. And this is the vat of bleach that we have. We put a cover over it so that nothing gets into it. I don't want to cause any kind of undue damage to animals or anything like that. Um, I don't want anybody getting in there. So we put a cover on it and then I put a cow panel on top of that um, so that hold it down so that nothing can get into the bleach because um, it's a pretty high concentration of bleach. So probably not something um, you want to get on you. We always wear gloves because bleach, you know. It's bad enough having the smell of rotting food on your hands on a regular basis. Um, I mean, the smell of bleach is pretty bad too. So I'm just gonna flip these, make sure that they're draining. Yeah, because you can see there's a little bit of water still in yeah, a little bit of water still in them. So we'll rotate these to get them cleaned. So if you're thinking of starting a food scrap pickup service, kudos for one. Two, have a plan. Um, you know, we, we get, we get pallets. So these are all on pallets, um, have stuff in place. We, we have this vat on a pallet so that if we ever need to move it, we can just grab it with the tractor because I don't remember how many gallons that is for a stock tank. Um, so it's heavy. I can't move it without a tractor. So here, I can actually tell you, cause we've got another one over here. This one is 170. So 170 gallons. Um, it's a lot. It's heavy. So the worm bins are doing pretty well. Um, we just fed them a couple of days ago. They've got, they're already forming their worm bowls and climbing all over this stuff to, to chow down on it. So that's pretty exciting. Um, this is just one of the bins. The rest look pretty similar. Um, paper plates. They love them. So, worms are doing good. The one that we had a problem with, get this one closed up, last time 
I showed you. Um, I think that's all cleared up. Let me head over to it. Kind of show you what that looks like. So what we did <laughs> um, is I found a bucket with a whole bunch of really dry ingredients. So chips and bread and things like that. It's a little mold. It'll take some time, but you see the worms have taken over. Um, and there are no more maggots in here. So we got a bunch of worms in the cover. Um, and the maggots are all gone. So, and I also have one of these traps, one of these fly traps in here, just in case to get anything else that may be in there. Um, and the other side, you can see worms all over. Worms seem to be doing well. Um, chowing down on this stuff. So I'm happy that we were able to dry it out, get the maggots out of there. Um, so that's another exciting thing in the worm bins is they're, they're doing pretty well. One of the greatest things about living out here in the middle of the country is that everyone is, is very diverse um, crops and farms and things like that. So we have a neighbor who grew, who grew 60 head of cabbage um, for sauerkraut. And so he asked us if we wanted them for our chickens or the pigs. Um, and so we dumped a bunch of them in here. This is probably a third of what he gave us um, between the pigs, the chickens, and then anything that they don't want, we gave to the worms. Um, but the, the chickens got the lion's share of it. And they seem to be doing very well. So that's all that's left. Um, this was a big keeping pile before. Um, so I think that's kind of neat. Another update for what's going on here on the farm is our chickens started laying, which is awesome. They've chosen this one spot as where they lay their eggs. So let's see if I can get in there. Let's see if we have any eggs this morning. Can I can I look? Can I look? Can you move? We have an egg. How exciting. Hmm. So let me close this up. Hey, watch out, watch out, watch out. Come on. Come on, move, move, move. You're really gonna make this inconvenient for me, aren't you? Anyway, so these eggs, you'll notice are pretty small. So the first eggs that they lay um, as pullets, that's what we call them, are actually really small. And that's totally normal. Um, they'll get up to speed. You know, it's like anything, you practice makes perfect. So, um, so this is number seven this week. So I think that's pretty exciting. So I'll go put this in with, um, I'll put this in the house with, uh, eggs like this. You don't have to wash them and you can leave them on your counter and they'll be just fine with the ones at the store. What happens is they get cleaned and then they lose the bloom. And so the bloom is like the protective coating on the outside of the egg. Um, and that means that you have to keep them in a fridge at all times. So if we were to clean this, we'd have to put it in the fridge, but we're not, we're just gonna leave it the way it is and we can leave it on the counter. Um, and then we'll just wash it up when we need it for cooking and whatnot. Pretty cool. We also got to work in the garden this week, fixed all of the tomatoes, put some posts in here, some, some little tea posts and big tea posts, um, depending on the tomatoes um, to try and shore them up a little bit. And for our efforts, we got some cherry tomatoes today. I think every day we're probably grabbing five to 10 tomatoes out of here. Um, and soon we'll be grabbing the corn cause it's getting, it's getting to be pretty decent size. It's getting there. Um, I don't know why the silks on this one are this color and the silks on this one are the usual color. Um, because we got the exact same type of corn. 
So I don't I don't know what happened. If if you know, let me know because I find that curious because um, they all came from the same package. But um, yeah, there's kind of a 50-50 mix between the purples and the greens. So I don't know what's up with that. Kind of neat. But yeah, we probably get um, a bowl full of veggies every day from the garden. It's pretty awesome. So we're we're very happy with what's going on here. Okay, another update. So when you live out in the middle of nowhere and you have a bunch of space, you start doing some silly things. So I reached out to the uh, power company and said, hey, if you have any telephone poles, I'll take them. Um, cause we're planning on adding to the pastures over here. Um, it was double the size. There was another pasture up to about that telephone pole all the way through to the barn, but they, they pulled it out. Um, and so we want to put it back. And so I called the telephone company and said, Hey, uh, do you have any telephone poles that we could use? And they're like, Oh sure. You know, we could drop some off. So they dropped off eight of them. They need a little bit of work. You know, we need to pull out some of that stuff, cut them down to size. Um, and then this morning I'm having my coffee and I hear a truck come down the driveway and they dropped off more. So I think they, I don't know how many they dropped off, one, two, three, four, seven or eight. So they dropped off another eight telephone poles. All right, three, four, five, yeah. Um, so I'll need to cut these down to size as well. But now we have posts. What a cool way to recycle something that is, you know, would have ended up in a landfill. Um, you can't burn them, or you shouldn't burn them, I guess, is really, because they're soaked in creosote, which is kind of nasty stuff. Um, so we just need to take off some of this cool, really, really old hardware that's on these things. Um, I'll have to find a use for it at some point. Old insulator parts and whatnot but anytime there's a storm or anytime there's some damage like you can see this one burned at some point um you know or got hit by a car or broke so we just cut that section off um i don't know if I, I may or may not use the chainsaw because these things have a tendency of having nails from every lost dog or staples from every poster um or whatever or miscellaneous identifying marks that have been nailed in there so there's all sorts of nails and nasty stuff in there so i don't really want to use my chainsaw on this probably do it by hand um which isn't that bad they're they're pretty dried out so it's not a big deal and then we can use them to build posts or a climbing wall or i've seen somebody make it as a backdrop for like axe throwing or something like that these are really sturdy really solid you know these are what eight to ten inches thick um so you could use them for a lot of stuff and we have the space so why not recycle something that isn't ours to recycle but at least we can recycle it um so that's kind of the idea here is putting everything to good use and getting as much use out of stuff as we possibly can um you know, we don't expect other people to do this kind of stuff, but if you can, cool, go for it. I, I think it's awesome. There's a lot of cool ideas. You can make these as garden posts or like a, a jungle gym for the kids using them as like those stepping stone things. Um, you know, you put them off the ground, I don't know, four feet, you know, and have the kids walk on them. Um, stuff like that. Lots of ideas, of ways to recycle these instead of just putting them into landfills because these things are huge they're 30 40 feet um so we'll come up with some cool ideas and we'll post them as we as we do um develop them or if we use them as pasture area and expand this pasture out to it would probably be out to here to about there so it's about an acre of pasture because we've got some more animals coming and they're going to need some space so having something like that would be pretty awesome. Another way that we recycle um, or take stuff that nobody else wants is through our barn cats. Um, so there is a local 
feral cat um, agency that takes in feral cats and they try and turn them friendly and they spay and neuter them and all that and then they adopt them out. Um, but there are certain cats that just don't like people. And so we've rescued, rescued four before, um, Waldorf, Statler, Tom, and Chloe, and they're doing great on the farm. Um, so we got three more. Um, I don't think these ones have names officially yet. Um, they're three black cats, which is really weird. Um, and they're not the friendliest. They'll, they'll probably, if I were to reach in there, they'll hiss at me still. Um, and so we leave them in the cage until they get comfortable with their surroundings and feel a little bit more comfortable living here on the farm. Um, and then we can open the cage up and they'll, they'll know that this is kind of like base and they'll come back here for food, water, shelter, safety. Um, and then they can go out and kill the mice or the moles or the voles, um, is mainly what they've been taking care of here. Um, which is pretty great. So that kind of helps everyone around here not have too many pests. It's a great pest control. Plus they're adorable. And once they become friendly, which takes a lot of time and, and a lot of love and all that, um, and they're great to have around. And a few of them, um, just come up to us every time we're out just to say, Hey, and come up, come up for pets and snacks and treats and things like that. So they, they're great to have on the farm. Um, and we really appreciate having them and, and changing them from feral mean cats to friendlies. Um, cause that's what we do here. So we take stuff that nobody else wants and we turn it into something cool, whether it's, food scraps, telephone poles, um, old junk cats that nobody wants and we'll turn it into something neat. So stick around. We'll have more stuff like that coming up. This is the coolest thing I have ever seen. This is more likely than not an antlion um trap i guess um antlions they're harmless they're they're not poisonous or venomous or anything like that they eat ants and anything else that falls into their little trap um we have a few of them so there's one right next to me there's a little one there's the big one that i just showed you um, there's a couple more around here we're out by the barn um, I just saw him the other day. I thought it was, honestly, it looked like something my kid did, um, with a stick just playing around. Um, but upon closer inspection, it's an antlion. Um, so pretty cool. Look them up. They're kind of neat. They look crazy awesome. Um, I'll try and post a picture up so you can see what they look like. Um, but they're awesome. They've got these, these awesome claws and they, they devour ants and I don't, I'm trying to see if I see any ants around. We don't really have ant problems here. Um, and I bet I know why. Because of the ant lions. Pretty cool though. I'm glad we have them. They're helpful. They're beneficial. They get rid of ants.